Hello, and welcome to our midweek devotional service here at Grace. Some of you have been asking for a, a, just a shorter midweek break, and so we thought that this week we would give that a try. Well, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Circumstances for this week are enabling us to give this a try, so we'll be curious uh, to hear if you prefer this. This week we're just going to go with the reading, a, a, a short devotional message for you, uh, and then a closing prayer, and we'll see what you think about that. I've got red on today because we're looking forward already uh, to Reformation. If you can see it all behind me, you see that the pyramids are red. Pastor Kyle is going to have a very nice message for us this weekend uh, as we celebrate the Reformation, and hopefully this will lead into what he has to say. So prepare your hearts as we call upon our God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Here's our reading. Our reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 8. Now, when you come to church on Sunday or view online on Sunday, we actually snuck in an alternate gospel for you uh, from Matthew, chapter 11. Uh, but this one is from the Gospel of John. It's the traditional reading for Reformation Sunday. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of the Lord. So how do you feel when you see this kind of sign or hear this kind of thing? You have to. I've noticed that people have made a big deal uh, over the course of the COVID time uh, that their rights are being taken away when they're told that they have to wear masks. There's been a lot of discussion, a lot of debate on that. Some states have had laws requiring masks. Absolutely must. You have to do it. In our state, in Florida, our governor has decided to give freedom to different communities to determine how things are going there and, and then determine whether the citizens in that area must wear masks or it's suggested or they don't need to at all. And by God's grace, we seem to be doing as well as some and, and really, frankly, better than most because we're saying, you get to. We're appealing to people's love for one another and saying, you get to wear a mask, and if you're able to do that, well then you're protecting the people around you who you love and who you care for, and, and, and that sort of appeal can be effective. Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King Jr., but Martin Luther, the 16th century monk, priest, doctor of theology, and now uh, known as reformer, heard a lot of times that you have to. He was told by his church that you have to keep all of God's commandments. And of course, the Bible tells us you have to do that. Well, we know that we can't, so that's a problem. But it was even worse for Luther because his church was telling him, you have to do lots of other things over and above those commandments. For example, Luther in many ways became a monk because he thought he had to and that by doing that, he would work his way closer to heaven. And then he thought that you have to pray the Psalms reading through the whole book and singing through the whole book every week. And you have to deny yourself a lot of things in life. And you have to pay money 
in order to get your grandmother's soul out of a weird place not mentioned in the Bible called purgatory. That type of thing can drive a person crazy. God's law does that. It accuses. And the more you read it, the more you realize you can't do it. And the more you become like the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7 who wrote the good that I want to do, I cannot do. But the evil that I keep on doing. And then God steps in. He didn't have to do anything. Frankly, if it were one of us, we would have probably just wiped the whole thing out and started all over again. Have you ever done that before? You've gotten frustrated with something you're doing. I, I had that happen just this last weekend. I, I was writing something for a golf website, and uh, I had a little problem with it. I got frustrated, and so I called the editor of the website, the head of the website, the webmaster, and I said, just erase the whole thing, and I'll start over again. Wouldn't you have done it that way had you been God after the sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? It seems like the easier way to do it. But you see, God has always loved his creation. And he had this plan from before the foundation of the world that when things went awry, he would send his son into the world to redeem the world of its sin. And when the time was right, he did just that. Here we see Jesus talking about just that. And he said that having to be offspring of Abraham was not the case to gain entry into heaven, but rather by his coming, you get to. Not just the people of God, Israel, but all people get to. Son making us free by going to the cross and dying for all of those times that we had to but couldn't. Earning us the forgiveness of our sin and the life everlasting. Baptized into Jesus, you are free, which means that you get to. And it means that now those times when you are kind and loving to another person, well, that's something that you get to do because of God's love for you. When you give an offering at church, that's something you get to do. It, it, it's an amazing thing that our God has done for us and given to us. Praise be the holy name of Jesus forever. Amen. And now you get to fold your hands and join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. See you all this weekend for church. You get to do that. Come or watch.